the veteran coach of the St. Louis Billikens has won five national championships. And he's a part-time coach. When he started coaching at St. Louis, uh, his salary was $1,800 a year. His salary is now $6,000 a year. He works for the post office. Uh, has had an incredible career. There you see the score. A little over 15 minutes to go in the second half. Well, he hasn't been keeping up with inflation, that's for sure. <laughs> There have been a couple of benefits. Uh, a daughter and his son, Ty, both have graduated uh, tuition-free from St. Louis. Had another daughter go, who went to St. Louis. She just transferred to the University of Missouri, St. Louis, because they play college soccer, women's college soccer there. So he something? left her dad to go play soccer at the University of Missouri, St. Louis. So he's got to find some time to go see her play. That's right. Throw in. On the far side, Menendez long throw in for Fredrickson, number four. Two time All America on the far sideline, plays it back to John Hayes, number seven, who has one of the goals. He has the go ahead goal, played it on the rebound. Well, Hayes uh, with a little bit of a Stanislavski right there as DeBrito <laughs> came up from behind, barely touched him, and uh, he went down with it. But Keo has an honest and true love for the, the sport of soccer. As you see, DeBrito. Behind Hayes right there, not too much contact actually, and I'll tell you, sports uh, are very proud of people like Harry Keo to donate their yeah. time, uh, like he has through the years. And Maroney a little bit upset. Well, Maroney not too happy with the way things have gone. Long ball by Duran and Renahan comes out to grab it. Maroney's coaching 23 years, uh, started up at Middlebury uh, College, yeah. I believe. As you can see, fouls. Yeah. It's been a tough game. McEwen playing it in, sent back by Menendez to the keeper as Cornolo and Carlos Carlos were bearing down for UConn. Well, I think the worst thing that could happen to either of these teams today would uh, have to go out here with a tie. <laughs> and maybe that's why it is physical. They want to get this thing under their belts. Uh, it would be an important win, and I'm sure in the rankings, uh, it's going to have a, a great deal of effect. Absolutely. Eric Meyer and the freshman has the ball. You know how many times coaches say preseason rankings don't mean anything. They do mean a lot of things. They know about them. Yeah. They look at them. The players know about it. Cornolo volleys it on for Carlos Carlos, but Joe Feller gets to it first. Feller with some nice movement. Leaves it there for McEwen. Plays it on to Fredrickson. Marked by Billy Maroney. Frederick come on the last couple of minutes uh, did not start because of an ankle injury. Fredrickson is one of those uh, players that uh, he can be out there running for 45 minutes each half and his hair never gets messed up and he looks he looks as fresh as the day has begun. He's slender but a very strong player. Long ball from Maisley overlapping on the near side rather marking Hayes on the near side. Hayes has the ball marked closely by Maisley back heel to Fernandez, Fernandez, marked by Myron, crosses in front. Olwig went up, missed it. Loose ball shot goes wide. Fredrickson taking the shot, battling in front, and the shot went wide. And that is Billy Maroney getting up slowly. Well, it's the best chance that uh, St. Louis has had in this since their last score. And Fredrickson uh, battling Renahan as Renahan once again decided to come out, but that time he jumped up, Sam, instead of sliding into the ball, he yeah. jumped over it. And the, the time shot before, went under him. Yeah, on the, on the uh, one of the other goals, he slid underneath of it, yeah. and the shot went over him. So uh, he has got to give himself up a little bit more, I believe. 11.45 to go, second half, St. Louis 2, Connecticut 1. You're watching College Soccer 81 on ESPN. Sam Rosen with Roger Twible. We're at the University of Connecticut campus in Storrs, Connecticut. For our season opener, UConn with the ball. Ed Lynch to throw in on the far side of DeBrito. Marked closely by Jim Cavanaugh. DeBrito double team and the ball taken away. Foul call. Free kick for UConn. DeBrito gets up. He's upset. He's upset with O'Mara, who's been in the middle of several physical skirmishes. DeBrito just chips it into the box for Comrie. It's knocked away by Menendez. Myron looking to shoot. Myron the shot. Goal! The freshman Eric Myron setting it up and tying the game. Beautiful goal by Eric Myron, and 2-2 is the score with 11.07 to go. Myron, the All-America from Falls Church, Virginia, the only freshman starter for the University of Connecticut. And UConn has been aggressive in the second half. They have applied the pressure. St. Louis was able to withstand it. But that time, they spread their offense out just a little bit more. That opened up some of the lanes, and Myron was able to get it in. And 
credit the freshman with some great poise. He could have shot that ball right away. Instead, he took it down, went, moved a little to his right, got a little bit of space, and drilled it in. 2-2 the score. Eric Myron scoring for UConn to tie it up. Back comes St. Louis. Cavan on the long ball for Olwick. Battling with the spirit. Moroni volleys it away. Carlos Carlos to Cornolo. Back to DeBrito. The Huskies applying the pressure. Long ball offside. Offside. Carlos Carlos was offside for UConn. 10.35 to go in the second half. Connecticut 2, St. Louis 2. It has been a good game, a good fine game. season opener. Tied at one at the half. Cronolo and Fernandez, the respective goals for UConn and St. Louis. Hayes and Myra now scoring in the second half for St. Louis and UConn. And we have to say that UConn has controlled the tempo in the second half. They've applied the pressure. They finally came through to tie it up here. We have just over 10 minutes left to go. And St. Louis, which is not substituted to the extent that UConn has, uh, once again might be showing some signs of strain here in the late going. That's DeBrito down on the field on the far side. Coach Joe Moran Maroney goes over to check him out. Pedro limps off. In the second half, 10 minutes. And Jim Dorsanio comes back in the game replacing him. Dorsanio had a goal in the scrimmage against Syracuse. Renahan, the goalkeeper with the ball, coming down to 10 minutes to play in the second half. Myron, cross midfield for Elvis Comrie. Comrie coming down the near side, marked by Menendez. They race stride for stride. Good tackle by Menendez. And across the near touch line, throw in UConn. Myron into Billy Maroney. Now it's Eric Myron who scored that goal, crossing into the box for Cronolo. The shot goes wide. He was marked tightly by Phila, who didn't give him any room to get a good shot well, off. Phila did a fine job marketing that time. Stayed right in front of him, cut off the area between Cronolo and the goal. And really, as you watch it here, this is how you mark a man on defense. You get in that penalty area. Stays between the man and the goal, so when he came up with it, he had to go to the outside. Out the midfield, McSpirit heads it on to Dorsanio. Dorsanio back to Charlie McSpirit. Right side for Cornolo, beaten to it by Jim Cavanaugh. Out to Dave Fernandez, number 14. Marked by Carlos Carlos. Connecticut, 29. St. Louis, 17 shots on goal. That's what you've said. UConn is taking control. Dorsanio. For McSpirit, now it's back outside. Maisley coming forward, end of the middle, but a bad pass, and Fredrickson is there. Fredrickson, number four, double team, take away by Maisley. McSpirit has it. Maisley does a super job, uh, Sam, of coming up, overlapping, and, and being very active. And he seems to know just when to come forward, too. That's Carlos, Carlos down. <laughs> it's been a tough day for Carlos. <laughs> yes. He and uh, Bill McEwen uh, have not had the best of times out there. Here's the ball from McSpirit heading into Carlos and McEwen. A little hand <laughs> on the back, a little trip on the leg. Yeah. And Bill's a physical player, free kick. McSpirit and Comrie are at the ball behind it and deciding which one will play it. Eight minutes, 10 seconds to go, second half, 2-2 two -two the score. Joe Phila, I know where he's going to be doing. McSpirit runs by it, and the chip by Comrie too high, too far, and it'll be goal kick for St. Louis. Hey, he got Comrie got just a little bit too much of that, and it took off on him. You see the score tied up at two. We have seven minutes, 50 seconds left to go in this game, which has been a very, very exciting game here in the second half as UConn has really applied the pressure. St. Louis going with a very young team and going with most of their... Uh, starters all the way. I'll tell you, and these youngsters, uh, Coach Harry Keo has got to be happy because these youngsters have played well. Fernandez, Menendez, uh, Duran in the back, Baker in goal. They have all played very, very well. Kavanaugh in the back as well. Darrell Duran with the ball. Marked loosely by Cornolo, sends it over to Joe Phila. Two of the best teams in college soccer opening up here at the University of Connecticut. St. Louis coming forward. The cross by Kavanaugh for Hayes. Hayes puts it down. The shot. Goal! John Hayes, brilliant goal, beating Renahan. And St. Louis goes back out in front with just seven minutes to go by a score of three to two. Second goal of the game for John Hayes. Great play by Hayes and a fine cross, setting it up. 
Kavanaugh once again setting up a goal. Lack of communication there on the uh, UConn defense as both uh, Maisley was back there, McSpirit was back there, and after it, as you can see, here it comes. Hayes controls the ball, and you see three people from UConn just standing around. Brubacher was also there, and they just almost froze, and after the goal was scored, they turned and looked at each other and said, what happened? What happened? St. Louis got the goal. They lead it 3-2 to two with seven minutes to go. Great goal. John Hayes, who scored 13 goals last season, has started off this season with two for St. Louis. Headed away by Philo. Debrito has it. UConn looking to push forward. Long shot by Debrito. Rolls on goal, and Baker is there to make the save. Billy Maroney bearing down on Baker. Maroney all over him. Maroney looking to steal that ball away. Baker looking to get it away. Finally kicks it loose. Six so and a half minutes to go in the second half, and St. Louis leading it three to two. UConn, which is the more veteran of the two teams, now has to show their composure. They have to stay in their controlled offense, make the good short crisp passes, and not take a lot of long balls. John Hayes played a little too far across the near sideline, going for UConn. No hands, Jim. And we have had a substitution in goal. The sophomore, Tony Pierce, has come into the game replacing Jim Renahan. So Tony Pierce is in goal. There you see him. The sophomore replaces Jim Renahan with UConn trailing three to two. Nope. Renahan, I, did, I couldn't fall Renahan on that goal, but I did nope. think the first two, he did not play as well as he could have. Dorsanio with a cross is blocked by Duran. Dorsanio in the corner again. Number 15 plays it out to Myron, the freshman, who has a goal. Nice move around McEwen. Myron, another nice move in front, and it's cleared by Olwig coming back. You see the St. Louis forwards coming back. McEwen is down and holding his left knee. He's hurt. McSpirit to Myron in the middle, looking for a shot. It's blocked by Menendez. Ed Lynch has the ball. Well, Menendez has been some kind of player today. And he took it away from Lynch. Plays a long ball. The goal is all, it was empty, with Pierce coming way out of the goal. And it's all the way across the goal line for a goal kick for UConn. Tony Pierce is out of Granite City, Illinois, which is the hometown of Dave Fernandez. Uh, so he's from the St. Louis area. Here it is. Look at Myron, the freshman, the All-America high school player from Falls Church, Virginia. Nice little touch right there to come back to the inside. He drops it off. But Olwig is there. Yeah, good play by Olwig coming back. Try to get it for Cornolo. Bill McEwen, the junior forward, is uh, the junior midfielder is injured on the play. He was holding his left knee. He has had injury problems, did not start because of an injury. Uh, has been, did not start the second half either. Coach Harry Keogh deciding to play him in a relief role, but uh, could be costly. Well, he is, he's given a good effort today, and he came into the game with a bad knee, and he is in some obvious pain right now. And this is, I asked Harry and both uh, Joe Maroney, how do you deal with this situation where you have some injured players at your first uh, game of the year? And he said, hey, listen, you know, we've just got to let the guys, if they come to us and say they want to do it, we put them out there and hopefully we get the best and they don't get injured any further. Uh, McEwen obviously uh, uh, limping as he comes off the field. Uh, he'll be sorely missed here in the final yeah. five minutes. Weaver limps off. Dan Weaver comes back. McEwen uh, limps off. Dan Weaver comes back. And Harry Keogh helping him off. We have a little over five minutes to go in the second half with St. Louis leading it three to two. And UConn trying to apply some pressure, looking for that tied, tying goal. Debrito heading it back. Carlos Carlos running onto it. Tackle there by Fernandez. Debrito wide. Nice move around Kavanaugh. Nice move around Fernandez. Plays it back to Carlos Carlos. Chips it in front, blocked by Duran. Myron the shot and a, a goal! A goal!